welcome back to another little reading of mine. I <laughs> I came across a good one for you, for all of you. It's a story I've been saving for a special occasion, and what better way to celebrate 100 subscribers than to let you all bask in the glory of this delightful tale. <laughs> this story is called Abandoned by Disney. Wait, no. No, it's not. What's wrong with me? That's for another day. This is its sequel. So yes, the sequel's coming out before the actual story because I feel like the sequel was more so meant to come before this. Myself reading them. <laughs> anyway, the following tale you're about to hear is titled Room Zero. Now, <laughs> with that being said, turn the lights down and turn the volume up as we journey into this lovely, lovely hell. <laughs> take it away, take it away to room zero. It, it's been a while since I've written anything related to the Disney Corporation and Rightfully so. I'm sure you can all, I'm sure you all can understand why. A lot's been going on since my last post. I received a lot of questions and concerns from folks who read my first hand account of Mowgli's Palace, a resort that was built and abandoned by Disney. I want to thank everyone who mirrored my post. It's been taken down from a few places, mostly corporate sites that were easily linked, easily linked to a higher power. However, for every new topic or disappointing blog post, it seems like a hundred more or thousands more popped up. This is something they'll have to face. There's no turning back from it. There's no turning back from them at all. None for me either, unfortunately. I'm definitely being followed. For the first month or two, I chalked up it. I chalked it all to paranoia. Well, paranoia. I shouldn't say paranoia. Man, I haven't so to speak. I can't even speak correctly anymore. What was wrong with me? Anyway. Any casual glance or half smile in my direction sets me off. Hair standing in the back of my neck and everything. The first one, or rather, the first one I was actually able to spot was a telephone worker milling around my apartment complex. He was a middle aged guy. Dressed just as you would expect, I guess, but something just seemed off about him. I couldn't, I couldn't place it, but I knew it wasn't just my imagination acting up. He was awkward, out of place. Not somebody who would be comfortable doing his routine job, you know? And I couldn't shake the feeling of that. I, I followed him around the corner, only to lose him there. When I turned back and went to go home, there he was, staring at me, directly at me, about ten feet away, expressionless and cold. Exploring? He asked. That was all he said, and there was an accusing tone in his voice. Tell me. What is it? What kind of what kind of fucking blue collar phone jockey does that? Seriously, what? You answer that fucking question. Who does that? But I digress.
guess. I guess that's the worst part. Never feeling safe. Ever feeling alone. That, that and the occasional Disney merchandise left someone up somewhere for me to find. I mean, a little rubber Mickey in the mailbox. A Disney's Adventure magazine on my bookshelf. They hide little Mickeys everywhere you see. Three circles, one big, two small. It, it's a silhouette of the famous mouse in my head. I've, I've started keeping a running list of the Mickeys I found. Coffee cup rings on my table, one big, two small. Colored glass bottles left on my doorsteps, viewed from top down, all red. Graffiti on the wall of my way to work. A huge earth, small sun, and moon in the proper locations. They're everywhere. People have emailed me about this as well. <coughs> oh, pardon me, even. I have my feeling too good at all. I. It probably wasn't a good idea to make a video log of this, but, you know, I really had no choice. I, I didn't feel too up to type, and I feel like this should be documented by voice. But anyway, back to what I was trying to say earlier. A lot of people ended up emailing me and asking if you repost anything. I have to say, you're going to start... Finding those sons of bitches outlines, I guarantee it. If you post anything by me, you're gonna find those sons of bitches. Just everywhere. Like me. Slowly driving you insane. But, it's what I've dealt with. The best one so far was one that actually made me laugh because it was. The horror, the horror of it. Put a drawing in chalk next to my car. I was taken aback at first, walking throughout the parking garage, keeping an eye out for people following me. The outline seemed perfect for the match for, well, a murder victim. You're probably familiar with the, uh, with, if you've read my past posts. Written in yellow pain, I'm sure. It was a single word. I can't even say the word anymore. I think it was red rack. R E T R A C T. Red rack. I think it's what it was, but I'm, I'm not sure anymore. The only good thing that has come out of all of this is that I know I'm not the only person who's been seeing all this stuff. I'm not going to give their names because, well, if I have to tell you why you have been paying attention. A researcher goes to Disney parks whenever they can. All throughout the year, he's not going to have fun, enjoy the rides, etc. He's looking for the gas cots. Or gaskets, as most would say. There's been a long tradition, apparently, of people reporting strange patrons throughout the park. Silent, motionless, staring patrons of every age, shape, and size. Men, women, adults, children, and teens. All wearing these horrifying Cold Warish themed Disney themed gas masks. Way back when Disney would get tons of complaints about oddly dressed folks following others around the park, folks would folks would then merge into crowds and disappear. 
later on, the gas masks caused the folks to draw other conclusions and reports of possible terrorists and bombers started following, flowing in like mad. All the reports most likely went straight to the trash can, as you would expect. I know I can't find any, any sign of any such occasions reported on by the media, although you should be aware of the fact that Disney can pretty much control its press like no other. You all know that. They have control or have a hand in literally almost every TV network and everything they do. So it's no wonder why everything goes so much so under the radar so easily, but hey. If it happens, we can't really stop it. But anyway, back to what I was trying to say, my research goes to the parks, talks to a few people, and tries not to draw many attention to himself. He'll just walk three, just walk up to like three or four families if they've seen his friend who's wearing a funny mask. He has yet to see a gasket himself, but. Through, through on one occasion, a child pointed him towards Frontier Town. As he raced through the crowd, he heard a single voice ahead cry out, Mommy, I want a goofy air mask too! A, I know, kind of a fucked up thing for a child to say, I must say. But, you know... You know, it's just, I don't know really how to describe it. It's honestly kind of fucked up to me. But, you know. A fellow I call lifeguard worked in a Disney water park from 2001 to 2003, roughly. He stood at the top of a, of a huge, huge thing. And, of course, there's more people trying to... Sending messages over the reports and everything, trying to get me to repost their blogs, their permission, and all that shit. Even when I'm trying to record this lovely, lovely thing here. I can't get rid of them. I swear I can't. But, anyway, lifeguard would stand outside the waterside and make sure none of the kids got too rowdy or anything. He'd pass kids through one at a time, telling them over and over again to be safe, keep their arms in, and so on and so forth. And one day, as he tells it to this fatter kid, I don't want to sound mean, but... This fat kid goes down the tube and doesn't come out at the other end. He sends two or three other kids after, the whole thing moves as steady as a clip. So naturally you would expect that the fatty guy stuck. The kids that followed him were stuck too. Not so. Only the big kid disappears. Everyone else comes out the other end, cheering and splashing like nothing's wrong. Lifeguard shuts down the slide, much to the aggravation of kids awaiting, before he can go through any of Disney's strict procedure splash. Fatty finally comes out. Staff members... <laughs> Staff members pulled the kid out of the water. He sank like a stone when he hit. His skin was already blue and his eyes... wide. All he would say is, no face kids. And stop squeezing. Which was... No one could really understand why or explain why he was saying that. I the kid was okay, in case you were wondering. He got car right off to a medical center when a lifeguard was told to open the slide back up. He made a big stink about how it clearly wasn't safe. Despite his complaints, he was threatened with firing and other lovely things. We didn't open the slide again. <laughs> yeah. Excellent employers. From that point, he he kept a closer eye on the kids. 
Every so often they come out in the wrong order. Never as son as the fat kid, but always with a vague look of concern. A dreamily half stupor that seemed as if they were trying to figure out what was reality, if you will. They take on some water and choke a bit, and they'd never come back up to the right again and blame them. I read, I read his emails with a, with the same sort of unease you might be feeling right now. I wanted to share his own story, but in the end, he didn't want to expose himself that way. I can't blame him, really. Snow White, which is an actual role she played, was a as a character in the park. She had a little. Hi, <laughs> a nice uh, little uh, tidbit for me. You know what happens when a costume employee drops dead in a suit, right? Right? Oh, then you're gonna love this. <sighs> Dang it, people! Stop! Stop messing with me when I'm trying to record stuff. I I only going to do this vlog once, and I can't do it again because I'm afraid they're gonna find me. So please stop. Anyway, going back to what I was trying to say, you're going to love this, because his save made me shock and shake the very core. One second, he's taking pictures with little Jimmy, and the next, he has a fatal stroke. A second costume mascot in the area has to sit with the corpse for a while until someone can come along and claim it. Those ones who can claim it are typically known as designated dry cleaners. They arrive and cart the body away in a discreet manner. All the while patrons have no idea they are sitting with a dead body for photo ops. Feel free to check your photo albums at this point. Please, feel free. That was bad, but another fellow janitor went completely off the creepy charts. Disney Wood, and probably others, is built with a series of underground tunnels just below your feet. Three stories, in fact, to be honest. Three stories worth. Anything and everything you can imagine is down there for use of the employees. They're called, uh, oh, uh, uh, UD doors. Or I think that's the term for them. Uh, I'm just going to call them util their actual name. Uh, utility corridors. Um, basically, uh, basically what they're for, uh, they're used to help employees get from place to place, such as janitors or characters, so you don't see them walking around the park in areas they're not supposed to be in. Uh, they pop in out through hidden doors and travel down a concealed town, travel to the concealed town you're walking on. Uh, janitor told me something that might be common knowledge, but nonetheless n news to me. Walt Disney had several apartments built in his built into his park. There's one above Cinderella's Castle. There's one in Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They're all over the place. Uh, more than that, there are nightclubs, a movie theater, a bowling alley, and much, much more. All behind closed doors, built right into the whimsical facades you pass by without a second look. Club 22 was such a hidden area. If you have the cash to join the exclusive club, which more than likely you don't, it's mainly reserved for people of like royalty and presidents and things of that nature. Then you have access to do much, much more. Club 22 is a place where anything goes. 
Disney Co. calls this plate, calls places like this, uh, dark zones. Spots where the squeaky clean vision of Mickey Mouse gives way to drinking, drugs, and yes, sex. The rest of the park is the bright zone, with a few gray zones here and there. As far as Janitor has said, it wasn't always that way. It was more of a slow decline and a gradual relaxation of social norms within the elite groups. The reason he came, the reason, the reason he came, the reason he knows all this, you may have already guessed. He cleaned it all. <laughs> After a lengthy background check uh, and a non-disclosure form, Janitor moved up from the park rank and attended to one of the Dark Zone's cleaning crews. Now, before you get some satanic human sacrifice vision in your head, Janitor saw nothing of the sort. Lots of empty alcohol bottles and yes, used condoms scattered like deflated New Year's balloons, yes, oh yeah, he cleaned up all that kind of shit. His share of blood and piss, vomit, but it was all down the unexpected behavior of the patrons as opposed to any other sort of cult behavior. At least, that's how he sees in a retrospect. All that trash, that profane shit went to a furnace and went clear up the smokestacks you see in the quaint cottages that are scattered throughout the Disney parks. Yeah. Think about that next time you go to to like some sort of shit like in around the fucking Snow White ride or some shit. I can't even talk today, dude. I... Just dealing with all this shit just got me so high strung as I'm mean, funny. If you've been to Disney, you've breath Dude, you breath Dude, you just breathe the most uh, the strongest amount of sin, disgust you could ever breathe or take into your lungs and you haven't even realized it backing up this information for all of me was hammer hammer mailed me an old-fashioned an old-fashioned way though I don't know how he got my home address he sent me photocopies of work papers providing his employment with the instruction to them when I was convinced, um, which I did gladly, uh, Hammer worked at Disney Park doing demolition and construction. At one point, he approached uh, Superior regarding some strange construction plans. There's a wide rectangular area marked off on the roof on the blueprints about the size of a supermarket. The area was left unnamed and only bore the words DO NOT DIG in bright whole cap letters. Not only was his superior in the dark, but he was super fucking profusely in the dark. He didn't want to talk about it. Didn't want to know about it and ended up con convinced with the space it was supposed to be left blank no matter what. Hammer didn't get it. The area seemed like a waste of space and it was directly conflicting with the work his team had been given. He started poking around here and there on his off time, finding out and finding only a direct steel door and a great span of 
concrete just behind. It was a supermarket's worth of blank gray floor. Soon after, Hammer started picking gaskets out of the crowds, and unlike all the reports, the people, the things, would stand in full view of the guy. They'd cluster together in, in the distance, or they'd pass by against the wall when he turned the, when he turned the corner. He said they moved weird. And like they were weak or injured. Like a deer that's been ran down by a hunter and can't flee anymore. The gas masks the Disney character faces were with filters jammed in. He had noticed that they seemed wet on the inside. Like condensation on a car window. Tiny beads of water glimmered behind the glass of them, and making it impossible for any of them to actually see. Uh, probing further, Hammer started asking questions of anyone and everyone who had been working at the park for a decade or more, and he came across somebody. He hit dead ends throughout though, until he did hit, find that one person, an elderly woman who worked in a restaurant on the main street. She's been there since way back, and I'm talking way back, a, and through nobody had, through, and though nobody had the balls to ask directly, everyone knew she had plenty of terrible stories to tell. Hammer asked about the empty space, then about the gas mask customers. At first, he thought he would receive a the typical answer of he's gotten so far and she's qu was quiet and nearly quiet. Room zero, she croaked a single shaking hand, placing her hand on her chest as if she were a little girl in fear of a father's punishment. She she didn't mean she didn't meet the man's gaze for the entire conversation. Room zero, as it turned out, was yet another hidden room, just like the apartments and Club twenty two. However, its sheer size and its spot deep beneath the park set it apart from any fun dark zones. It was a bomb shelter. Room Zero was built to withstand a massive attack, uh, be it conducted by four dom or domestic enemies. Room Zero was to be stocked with enough rations to feed the entire park's average number of patrons at, at any given moment, and housed a smaller yet lavish panic room of all, for all sorts of Disney's higher-ups. During World War II, official Disney gas masks were actually produced for children to wear in the event of an attack. The idea was that it would be less scary for the kids if Mickey Mouse's face was em embezzled on the wartime safety devices. Yeah, I know. The obvious problems with that. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, oh, God. But, during the Cold War scare of the 1960s, when Disney World was constructed, Room Zero was stocked with similar masks as well, whether they cared about the fears of children or not, or just careless branding, the things found their way down there. What's more, some genius decided to 
decided to decide that kids when then be frightened by the gas masks their parents wore and so all masks adult and child were made to comply with the insane standard ideally described as treating a wound with lemon juice none of this explained what hammer had been seeing though not only the seemingly supernatural appearances but the emptied out room as well i've been in there he explained there's there's nothing but cement floor and four walls no ida shook her head convinced convinced that she was telling the truth and she had covered her mouth starting to sob You've been on top of it. Someone or something surrounded the sounded the alarm one day, when the park was at full capacity. The warning was clear. It was supposed to be an air attack. Security, security urged uh, ushered everyone down, 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 into the tremendous shelter. There. They were ordered to put on the gas masks and hunker down for the duration of the assault. Everyone was quiet for about 30 minutes, save the crying children and the frightened whispers. No one wanted to die and no, and so they were thankful in a way that the strange measure of safety. <clears throat> then... And the first scream rang out. Hey! Hey! A man shouted, Quit pinching! Waves of shrieks and yelps ripped the whole crowd from wall to wall and back and forth. Who's running around? Settle down! Someone hollered. Who's laughing? That is isn't funny. Ow! Who's stepping on my foot? Despite despite the security guards urging to calm, to calm everyone down, and kept their control, the crowd became more and more agitated until, finally, after nearly an hour of madness, the lights flickered, then died. What followed could only be described as utter chaos. In the dark, only the wails of the young and anguished cries of adults could be heard in, massive, in the massive swelling din that bloodied the ears. Of all who within the black head go. <laughs> Chummer. A group of small staff members and a select few patrons made it out of the door, ready to face the war above rather than the insanity below. What they found, of course, was a desolate yet untouched theme park. The music continue to play, echoing through the silent storybook towns. Upon returning to room zero, the few who stood at the top of the steel staircase that led down into the pitch blackness had no signs of the previous fray. There was only silence. Ida herself descended the staircase despite the begging of those she left above. She reached the reinforced doors herself now, awash of the darkness, hearing only the brushing, the buzzing, and brushing around her ears. But that's when it hit her. That's when it really did hit her. A single voice came out of the darkness. The echo made it impossible to tell whether the mocking, raspy voice was at the back of the bomb shelter or if it was right in the front of her face. Shut the door, dear. You're letting out the cold. Gripped by terror, she did just that, 
Within days, the entire thing, shelter, staircase, all of it was covered with feet upon feet of cement. Air systems and generators above, its ceiling was removed, creating a large empty space. There... There it was, the Room Zero we all know today. But not the true Room Zero. They're still down there, Ida told Hammer. Down there with whoever that was. You might have noticed I used Ida's name. Unfortunately, she passed away soon after telling her story. Accidental fall, supposedly. After getting out of bed and turning on the light, she fell. Broke her neck. Such a devoted company devotee, the paper reported. Her entire bedroom was covered with Mickey Mouse silhouettes.